you clicked on this video because you likely have back pain while exercising, you're fed up with it. What we're gonna go through today are our top five exercises that are popular exercises that people do, but they're doing very poorly and thus it's causing a problem. They're not bad exercises because no exercise is inherently bad, but we can improve the way we do it and we understand that. It can feel a lot better. You can reduce that pain, reduce injury, improve your performance. Yep. So uh, we'll, give, we'll go through those top five exercises and if you stick around, we'll give our number one tip at the end. I'm Dr. R.J. Burr, this is Dr. Mitch Israel, and we're part of Reach Rehab and Chiropractic Performance Center. Yep. We're a, a little chiropractic and rehab clinic in Plymouth, Michigan. It's the suburbs of Ann Arbor and Detroit, where we know that pain can be complex and frustrating. So what we do is we provide sports chiropractic, massage therapy, and a bunch of other services uh, to help you take the guesswork out of healing so yep. you can do more than just relief pain. You can become yeah. unstoppable. unstoppable. And then this is our YouTube channel. We have a lot of different stuff on here. And uh, as we mentioned before, today we're gonna go through helping you with some back pain through exercising, uh, but we have some other stuff too. Browse our channel, uh, lots of helpful tips, tips blah, 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 blah. lots of helpful tips, tips and tricks. Ooh. We also have some crack videos too. So if you're into yeah. that chiropractor crack stuff, uh, we have addicted. that on there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll do some today, who knows? Like if we, could, if we, we like kill this one, we can do a killer adjustment at the so end. We have to we have to earn the adjustment through our performance. Correct. Okay. But we can't actually like kill that. each other because neck, neck adjustments, too many puns there. Yeah. Exercise one is the almighty burpee. Yep. Uh, burpees or what, up downs, down ups. Yeah, Basically down -ups. You, you flop on the floor like a pancake and then you jump back up again over and over and over again. As fast as possible, right? Correct, if, especially if you're doing CrossFit. Nothing against CrossFit, but that's where it became popular was yep. through that. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what's called a burpee. It should be more of a throw up -y because if you do a bunch of them, that's what happens. Yes. Um, not a big fan of that exercise, mostly because I think it's kind of mindless. Mm -hmm. It's just like, all right, do a bunch of these, get tired. Anyone can do it. It's fine if you want to do it on your own, but you know, if you have a coach or a trainer that's doing yeah. these all the I like time. I more for a warm up at the beginning of an exercise, or like a beginning of a workout, just to get the heart rate going. Yeah, but that. As you work out for longer, fatigue becomes. A big issue, issue right? yeah. Or if there's a, yeah, here and there, whatever it may be. Just, but overall, I think there's better ways we know to like get the heart rate going and get your body moving. But if you want a real easy, mindless way, you can do a burpee. However, the original burpee, a lot of bending. Okay, so there's nothing inherently wrong with bending at the back, but there's a lot of back and forth bending at the back with right. a burpee. Mm -hmm. So, and especially if you're dealing with a back problem currently, or if you had prior back issues. Uh, you've never had back issues. It can cause some of it because of that repetitive bending, and there's there's more uh, risk than reward in my opinion with a burpee. However, yep. we know people are going to do it anyway. They love them. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to show you an altern a t alternative that's going to save or spare your spine so you don't torque it so much. Yep. So to help you understand, Dr. Israel, you want to do the bad burpee? <sighs> I don't think I've ever done a good one. So. Okay. Well, perfect timing then. All right. All right. So let's take a look and dissect his burpee. Okay. So let's go ahead. a little closer together. Good, okay. Whew. All right, so it's actually a decent burpee. How'd I do? Right, that's pretty good. There's still a good amount of bending. So just so the audience can see, can you emphasize a bad burpee? Get your feet really close together. Good. So if you notice, a lot of rounding at the back here. Okay, and then next step, go ahead and come on down. Good. A lot of arching at the back, and then coming back, the knees back in, rounding again, and then back up tall. So it's a cyclic round arch, round arch. And especially if you're at your you know, 50th, 60th burpee, as you fatigue, yeah. it gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And that can become a problem. It's like bending a paper clip back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually something might get tight or spasm on you. And God forbid you have some sort of major or bigger injury than that. Yeah. Um, so what can we do to spare the spine? Well, we want to stay as neutral as possible. So you want to go ahead and demonstrate this? Yeah, so how do you stay neutral? We'll go over neutral, I think, in the next uh, exercise. Yes. But the... It's just easier, if you're going to do more reps, we just want to go with a wider stance. And you could probably show it better from that angle. So you can use the hips a little bit more to get down first to initiate the first start of, or the start of the burpee. Yeah, so what happens is when we're, our legs are close together, when we go down, we only have so much hip range of motion. So when we go down, our hips are done here. Then what do we have to do to get further? You have to round at the back. Mm -hmm. And so that creates that bending there. 
Now we can use our hips to mitigate the amount of bending at the spine, which Dr. Israel said, yep. being more neutral. So if you widen up the legs using our hips, because our hips are not just oriented forward, they're actually oriented outward like this. So this is actually more neutral for our hips to be wide. So what we call this is the, uh, it's called a sumo position, but we call this the sumo burp or sumo burpee because it uses, utilizes the sumo stance. So now from here, I can sit my butt back I can drop down to the ground here, and then when I come back up here, I'm mitigating the amount of repetitive bending. Now there's gonna be some, but it's not end range back and forth. When you're okay? not flopping on the ground, just trying to rush through the reps too. Correct. And we can also upgrade and downgrade this too. So you can start here, and you can quite literally at the low level, sit the butt back, hands here, walk the feet back, no push up, Bring the feet back, push yourself up, and stand up. And you can do a little jump if you want, right? So super easy. Then we can do the advanced version. You love this one. I love this one, favorite. Is that we hinge down, we drop down, and then we do the push up, and then we swing our legs up and underneath. Sumo. Position. You love right. showing that one off. You don't have to do the sumo part, but the, it's it kind of you know you get that strong position and you can rip these out pretty quick too. So you can go here. So if you're into CrossFit, you can go pretty quick mm -hmm. because it's like bench pressing with an arch. You have less range of motion to go through. So whether you want to take it easy on your back or you want to rip through burpees, the sumo burp is the way to go. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. Number two is the squat. Yep, classic. Okay, so Dr. Israel, what's the, what's the classic two main faults of a squat that we see? Well, if you can see from my better angle, usually people go into what we call a hyperextension, especially with a barbell on the back, where they arch the back too much and then come back like so. Yep, and if you could demonstrate. Give some heavy weight. Is this a PR for you, Midge? Oh, absolutely. Okay, so. Arching here is another, or is the, the probably the most common one we yeah. see. The next most common one is too much knees. How so? Well, they start, they initiate the squat from the knee flexion first, and then obviously coming straight down, it's a lot of load on the knees and could be on the back as well. All right, so how do we fix that? Okay, so you wanna be my dummy? Sure. So first things first is just trying to find a good neutral spine, especially in the start to the squat position. Easiest way to do that, our trusty dowel here. You can use a piece of pipe, yeah. broom at home. And we'll keep this simple. If you want more details on neutral spine and hip hinging, we got a video on that. Yep. But just for the sake of seeing the, the, what neutral looks like, we'll use the stick. Yep. So if I'm in heavy arch, right, we'll see a big arch. Yep. And then the opposite. For kind of this plumber butt position, we'll have this. Yep, so we don't tuck want the tail, bro. right? So we don't, we don't want a J Lo booty. We don't want a plumber butt. We want somewhere in between like this, right? Yep. And then when we have a good position here, then we want to initiate the squat from the hips. So almost thinking like I'm going to karate chop your hips, push them straight back, and then start your descend. Perfect. Good. And then come on up. One of my favorite ways to practice this. It's coming over to a door. Ooh, you're pulling out the shut the door strategy. Right? I am, I am. So how could this be so effective, especially when learning this technique at first, is, well, you just open a door behind you and you wanna make sure you're not being too much knees here, going straight down. You wanna go hips back, shut the door, and then we start our descent. So what's interesting about this is that you can take a stick and do all this fancy stuff, but the real easy, quick thing to do is just think in your mind that you wanna do a hinge first. But a hinge, sometimes people think arch in the back's a hinge, but it's not. By just going up to a slightly open door and thinking of karate chopping your hips back, shutting the door, that ideally puts you in the best position possible without overthinking and overanalyzing it. Exactly. Yeah, All so about simplicity. If, so if you're doing air squats and other things like in a cardio class, whatever it may be, this is great. If you're going to get into barbell exercise and heavy weight, we probably want to dissect it more. For sure. Okay, cool. All right, so we went from uh, sumo to karate chops. So do we have another sort of martial art thing to do for exercise three? Mm. Planks? Well, I probably Play not. Play dead. <laughs> How's that a martial art, <laughs> playing dead? Well, if they're good at martial arts. So oh, that means you're dead. dead. Okay, yes. I see. I got it. Yes. All right. 
So number three is planks, and then that's gonna lead into the next uh, two after that. So with planks, the biggest thing, I actually we see a lot with the burpee as well, is just sloppy position. Yep. So let's come on down. And this happens a lot with planks on the hands. So let's do a plank on the hands, Mitch. Give me a really, really sloppy plank. I mean, that's not even a plank, come on. Like, give me a sloppy plank. Okay. Head up. There we go, good. There we go, so a plank. So it's a pl sloppy position, why? Because the butt's way up, there's a big arch. We have some excessive, yeah, like sagging of the shoulder blade, so to say, without being too technical. And then a lot of times people drop the head down, right? And um, this is not a great position. Now we can correct this. It's hard in this position, so we're gonna go down to the forearms first. Good, and then on your knees. So by do, dropping to this position, it helps us find a better position of the back. So we're gonna go back to what we talked about with the stick as neutral spine. And I'll grab the stick, and we can use this as a guide. But really what we wanna see is go ahead and lift on up and do a knees plank here. Good. And then go ahead and then tuck your tailbone under. Good. And notice how we're getting pretty neutral with the stick there. And then tuck the head in. Good. Perfect, right there. So this is way better than go ahead and drop this. Good, and then drop the head. Then this, obviously you can see that alignment there, right? So when we hold this position here and here, we get way more out of the abs, because what this is, the abs work to anti-arch the back, which is really important for uh, general human function. So abs are not meant for crunching, they're meant for anti-crushing your spine into what's called extension. All right, so once we have this position here, and just this alone, if I pre press here, Dr. Israel will get a little bit of the shakes going. Right, but we can upgrade this now, then lifting the knees off the ground. Good, so he's controlling this pretty well. Good, and then from here, we can do a lot of different things. Like, let's just do some seesaws. Let's go forward and back. Right, good. Let's lift your right foot off the ground. Just raise it toward the ceiling a little bit. Right, so now we're on three appendages. The arms are a little harder, right? I would I say can't. do that stuff first before oh. you go to your hands. But once you feel comfortable with that position, you can do a full plank. Mm. So just for the audience, can we go up to the full plank now? Yes, absolutely. Good. Perfect. And so let's see how good he looks from the beginning. Not that great. So let's correct this, Mitch. There you go. Good. And then pull the chin in. So look how much better that is now than where he was before. And it's much harder to correct your position up here. So we recommend going from the forearms and knees first, getting good with that feel, and then going up higher. Just use a stick. Use a mirror. I mean, just holding that position, you feel better activation of the core to begin with. So yeah. you don't have to hang out there for five minutes. Yeah, you, or do a bunch of weird twisty things and all yeah. that stuff. Like, you don't have to get fancy. Really, it's about better quality first. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and the plank feeds into our next workout. The ab roll out. Since you're already down there, yep. I don't think you've gotten a workout yet. So we'll keep you going. He loves this. So we're we'll do the abs roll out. We don't have one of those roller things like you've seen in the infomercials. Like Body by Jake or uh, Chuck Norris, or I don't know who makes them, but anyway, the rollout thing. So we'll use a ball instead. Let's go ahead and do a little sloppy rollout here. I got my out. Right? So the biggest thing with the rollout people will do is out. again arch the back. Same idea with the plank. This is really just a dynamic plank. So you can take the same principles we just went over with this position or with this exercise. So let's hold this here first. Good. Let's get our stick again. Get it. Wait, so we have karate chops, sumo, and bow staff. So that's three things that are martial arts. So I'm seeing if we find any more. We need dumb trucks. So we're pretty bored, so we have to figure out fun things to think about. Let's go here. Good. So notice, neutral position here. Connection at the head, mid-back, and the tailbone. Good. And now go ahead and roll out with the top down. I got my out. Ludicrous, anyone? I'm already... No? I'm gonna okay. throw up. And go again. You're gonna burpee? Yep. Oh, here, let me Okay, go. let's give him a break. Oh. I mean, just holding the position better. I mean, it's smoking me. So go ahead and do a few more reps. Good, and then rock back. Good, and then roll out. Good, so he's keeping really good connection here. It's okay to have some movement, but it's not excessive arching or excessive rounding. Perfect, good. Looks great, okay. So then lastly, we'll do the glute bridge, yep. which again is another one, we'll switch off here, is that requires neutral position. So if you catch the drift here, a lot of things require this neutral spine. Mm -hmm. So with the glute bridge, yep. what do you typically see? Classic, 
Well, as people come up, they just overarch, right? That's the common theme of, to, of all these exercises, really, is look at how much bend we have right there. I know it would be awkward to put the stick through there. Might Don't you funny. do that. But go ahead and come back down. So we really got to find our neutral pelvis before we even get into that position. So similar to what we did to the other, with the other exercises, I want you to go ahead and give me that J-Lo booty. Yep, now give me the plumber butt. Perfect, so you can see there's excessive movement on either side. Do a couple more repetitions going back and forth, and then find that middle ground. And again, he should have nice flat back right here, which he yeah. is. Like I'm pressing the small of my back down to the ground. So that's a good cue is just push the small of your back down. Yep, and a lot of people just think of driving hips straight up, but you really wanna make sure you got some tension in the feet, pushing the ground away from you to then bring those hips up. Now, again, we wanna make sure we're not coming too high now when we're coming up. So go ahead and bring hips off the ground. Perfect, and you'll know it's high enough when you start feeling a lot of tension on the front of the hips here. A lot of people just fight through that, and that's where you can get some more overarching in the back right here. Yeah, so what he's showing you is that when we glue the, the spine down to the ground, we're in neutral at that point. Mm -hmm. And then we're lifting up as high as we can go without breaking that. So when we start to lift up here, at a certain point, I can't move through here anymore. So. I, and when I cheat through it, what happens is it's all back at this point. Yeah. So a great little thing you can do is take your fingertips and put them behind your back here, push the back into your fingertips, and feel those muscles back there. Slowly start to lift the hips up, 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 because if you're not sure how high to go, your back will tell you, because those back muscles down here should stay relatively relaxed. Mm -hmm. As soon as you go up too high, they turn into steel cables you feel these things like rock hard. So yep. if that's the case, you need to drop down a little bit and then pull that belt buckle up towards your nose to flatten out, or you should start back at the beginning. So push that back into the ground. You should feel those muscles soft, lift up as high as you can go, and then without overdoing it where you feel the steel cables. Yep, exactly. Cool. All right, so that's your basic glute bridge. You get way more out of it, and then from here, you can add different things to it, whether it's reaching overhead, mm -hmm. kicking out, going up and down, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Cool. So make it a glute bridge and not a back bridge, basically. Cool. All right. I'm exhausted. All right, so those are our top five exercises. We went through the burpee, the squat, planks, abs roll out, the glute bridge. Those yeah. are very common exercises you see in the gym or corrective exercises, uh, body weight stuff at home, wherever it may be. And those are little small changes you can do to make them better. The biggest thing being is staying out of overly extended or overly flexed spine. That neutral spine is ideally where we want to be, so these tips help you with that. By doing that, you reduce the strain on your low back. You allow your body to absorb it throughout your core and distribute that force equally as opposed to being it focalized on your back here causing too much stress. So if we can do that, we can get more of our exercises, increase performance, reduce risk of injury reduce that back pain from occurring in the first place and not constantly doing these exercises over and over again right. and then take an Advil, throwing some hot heat or ice on it, right. you know, doing these mobility or um, self-help uh, like uh, you know, foam rolling and um, lacrosse ball stuff to help get some Just pain relief. Don't keep breaking the scab, right? Exactly. So sometimes the best thing to fix pain is to prevent pain by not causing the first place.